Hey everybody, in this video we're going to look at an important optimization regarding CPU usage. First I'm going to run the server, and then I'm going to run the client. And what you'll see is that the CPU usage went from 0% up to 13%. And then once I close the client, the CPU usage goes back to around 0%. So there's something happening once a client is connected that is ramping up our CPU usage. Let's take a look at the frame function for our server class. And what we'll see is that what we are doing is we are calling pull uh, in every call to frame. And the way pull is set up is the last argument is the timeout in milliseconds. So what this is saying is this is how long we will wait until one of our events is ready whether that's reading normal data or being able to write normal data without blocking. The problem is when we accept a new connection, by default, we're setting it up to uh, be able to pull to read for normal data and for when we are able to write normal data. However, if we don't have anything to write, what will happen is pull will return instantly and it'll say, hey, we're ready to write normal data on this socket. Then we'll go down to where we would write data and down here we check if we have pending packets which if we don't have pending packets then we just skip and go to the next iteration well the problem is pull is still ready to write data we never wrote data so it's going to keep returning instantly and that's ramping up our cpu usage because there's no timeout here the solution is we are not going to have this event to write normal data unless we actually have pending packets for our outgoing packet manager. When a new connection connects, instead of setting it to poll for reading and for writing data, we are just going to set it to poll for reading data. One other thing is while we're here, I want to move this on connect down to after we have our file descriptor set up. The way that we are going to determine when we need to set to pull write normal data is we are going to have a for loop at the beginning of our frame. What we are going to do is we're going to go through every single connection. We're going to see if there are pending packets on the outgoing packet manager. If there are, we're going to update the file descriptor for that connection of their events specifically. And then we'll say, all right, we're going to check for being able to read data as well as being able to write data. The only problem with this is the way it's currently set up, once we are ready to send one packet, we'll be stuck at polling for reading and writing data. We need to set it up so that after we send the data, we go back to just polling for reading data until we have more data to be sent. Let's go down to where we are sending data. And what we'll do is after our while loop for trying to send the data, we are going to check if there are still any more outgoing pending packets. If there are not any more outgoing pending packets, then we are going to set the events for the file descriptor related to this connection to just be back to polling for when we can read normal data. We're going to have to do the same thing on the client. So let's go to the client CPP and first go to where our connection is established. We're going to take out where we were setting it to pull for reading and writing and just pull for reading. Now let's go down to our frame function. If we have outgoing pending packets, we'll update the event to pull for here. And now let's go down to where we are sending data. After our while loop for processing the data, we're just going to have a if statement set up like we had before. We will just say, if there are no more outgoing pending packets, let's just pull for reading data. Now let's go ahead and test this out and see the performance difference. There we go, we have the server and client running and our CPU usage is still about 0%. That is all that we are going to cover for this video, and in the next video we will probably look at some more optimizations.